what makes a fast swimming pool or what makes a swimming pool fast? Fast swimmers. Hey everybody, welcome. Today we're going to be answering a question of what makes a fast swimming pool. We have a guest who is uniquely qualified to speak about fast swimming. This is Steve Crocker from Water Technology. Steve, thanks for joining. Thank you, Eric. This is a really, really interesting topic and it's one uh, that I've been asked about for for many, many years. You know, as a as an athlete and, a, and as a college coach and a club coach and, and, an, and as, a, as an engineer, if there's anybody who should have an opinion on what makes pools fast, it's probably me. And I'm always asked this question and, and it's typically about every four years when, when Rowdy's- But it's an Olympic year, right? Yeah, it's an Olympic year and Rowdy's talking about the pool being so great and fast and people are already, Steve, is there really such a thing? And right, and it's, it's kind of an intangible thing. So for the audience out there who don't know who Steve is, Steve was a world-class swimmer in his day. Uh, I think you actually had a world record for a while there, right? I did have the world record in the 50 meter freestyle. The fastest event of all. So that's awesome. So Steve is really qualified as a swimmer, but he's one of the foremost designers of competitive swimming pools in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're fortunate to have him on. The whole purpose of this natatorium knowledge page and this whole video series is to get the most qualified experts we can find. Steve is uniquely qualified for this question. So Steve, I'm going to go ahead and ask you and I'm going to let you talk. What makes a fast swimming pool or what makes a swimming pool fast? Fast swimmers. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I think it was Doc Councilman who, who, who had that quote years, years ago. And, and it's, it's very true. Wherever swimmers go for their championship meet, when, they are, when their skin is shaved and they're completely rested, chances are they're going to swim fast. That's why you always see world records broken at world championships and Olympics. But the pool itself can certainly do a lot to impact that. One of the most important things that makes a pool fast is smooth water. And, and that, that's related to a lot of things, you know, lane lines, properly tensioned lane dividers is one of the most important things to, to ensure a, a smooth surface, a good competition gutter, so that when a wave hits the edge of the pool, it doesn't bounce back into the field of play. That's super, super important. And even touch pad types, you know, in the, in the U.S., we use gutter hung touch pads where the water can go right over the top of the touch pad, but internationally, touch pads are higher. Yeah, they're the the flat wall touch pads. That's yeah. what they use in the Olympics and like FINA standard meets. Wouldn't that have reverb? Like there would be Absolutely. wakes that come back. A pool with that type of, with an international pad is not as going to be as fast of a pool because of that, that uh, the rebound of the wave energy off, off that type of touch pad. So those are the things that keep the surface. But a fair pool is more important than a fast pool. In my Amen. Opinion. A fair pool. That's a great quote. That if you're going to tweet out one little su- yeah. uh, one yeah. little summary is a fair pool is more important than a fast pool. Yeah. I agree. So what can happen in a 50 meter pool is you can get a rotational type type effect where water is gradually rotating around. So the north half of the pool might be headed that way, and the south half of the pool might be headed that way. And when you're swimming, you know, multiple distances, that kind of cancels. But if you're swimming a one lapper, a 50 free, yeah. Fast lanes and slow lanes, and you don't want that to happen. Okay, so let's talk about things to avoid. I mean, you've been doing this a long time, and and I'm going to speak a little bit of this as a swimmer. I'll tell you right now, the pools that I did not want to swim in that looked gross were usually dark. They were very humid, bad air quality, wet decks that didn't have good drainage. And those are the little intangibles. So what kind of things, as a designer... What should they avoid? Well, there's so many things. This would be just a, an enormous list, and you've already brought up a few. Just, you know, air quality is probably about the biggest one. You know, if, if an athlete goes to, to a meet and they can't breathe at 100%, they're wheezing, coughing, they are not going to race at 100%. So that's right. a huge one. What, mostly what makes an athlete excited to swim is, like you said, bright and airy and, and that fan experience. It's kind of unfortunate in the sport of swimming, we don't have like a, like a lot of other sports where we've you no know, stadium type seating. I think that would be great. And, and we are seeing more, and more. you know, uh, Liberty University is a pool we recently worked on that has seating on three sides. So that brings the spectators and the energy closer to the action, which I think is a, 
a real plus. Do you think that depth actually makes a difference on speed? It, it does make some difference. Um, and I've, done, I've participated in, a, in some studies related to this. What happens is when a swimmer moves through the water, there's a boundary layer because of friction. There's a boundary layer of water that moves with that swimmer. And if anything interferes with that boundary layer, whether it be the pool wall, the pool floor, or another swimmer in an adjacent lane, that slows the swimmer down. So when you think about, let's say the boundary layer extends, you know, three feet, four feet beyond the human on all sides. You can imagine that when you're swimming at the surface, a pool six or seven feet deep is definitely deep enough. But when you're four feet deep, then you get close to the pool bottom and your boundary layer can be impacted by the pool bottom. So absolutely, I think uh, within reason, a pool two meters or more is, is preferred. I heard somewhere that the optimal depth minimum, it could always be deeper, right? But mm -hmm. the optimal depth minimum is the height of that swimmer. Would you agree with that? Um, partially. Longer, taller swimmers tend to swim faster. As you're moving faster through the water, you have a larger boundary layer, and therefore the depth requirement would go up. What are some considerations when it comes to a fast pool for bulkheads? Typically, the Olympics does not have a bulkhead because that's only one distance, 50 meters. But most pools that we design, if it's a 50-meter pool, you're also swimming 25 meters in that pool. You're also swimming 25 yards in that pool, at least in the United States. Right. So bulkheads are critical to make sure the pool is as functional as it can be. But having bulkheads does impact performance in a way. I think mostly what a bulkhead does is it makes it a little more challenging for the athlete to judge the location of the wall as they're approaching their turn. Because what they don't see is they don't see where the wall intersects the floor. But uh, they make it a little more challenging and it makes it more important to do a good quality meet warm-up. Yeah. Well, Steve, thank you so much. Um, these are all the questions I had on this topic of what makes a fast swimming pool. So thank you for joining me on that. Uh, any final comments for the audience? No, this has been great, Eric. Thank you. Uh, okay, Thanks. cool. Thank you for being with me.